Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, July 17th, 2017. What's going on? How are you? July 17, 2017. I'm going to go play that number. Remember that shit? And maybe you still do it. I always remember that. If all of a sudden, you know, somebody got something like a receipt or something and there was a a couple of the same numbers, that's what I'm going to play. I'm going to go down there and play it on the mega bucks. That's what they had in Massachusetts. Mega bucks. My favorite one, best name ever for any lottery I thought was set for life. That was just the perfect phrase. Every blue collar working stiff that's what they want dude just fucking set for life just sitting there having a fucking beer checks rolling in don't gotta worry about nothing set for life right because if you're working class you 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 work paycheck to paycheck and it becomes a fucking grind set for life Dude, I could fucking sit right here, right? I could fucking sit right here, dude, just fucking staring at my fucking toes, and I still got that check coming in every month for the rest of my life. You know why, kid? Because I'm set for life. You hear about Mikey? Dude, he hit the fucking set for life. He's fucking set for life, kid. Doesn't have to do shit, fucking cocksucker. Um, God bless him. Um... <laughs> Anyways, I'm in a great goddamn mood. Why? Because I got eight hours sleep last night, despite the fact my daughter, is that my daughter in there? Um, Just waking up and she's trying out her voice now. Remember when Mariah Carey used to hit those really high notes? She's doing that. And every time I look over like, oh my God, she's just looking at me and she has like her legs and her arm, everything's like up in the air and she's smiling at you. It's like impossible to get upset. You just start laughing. I was actually riffing about that this weekend in uh, Grand Rapids going. I wonder if that works as an adult. You cut somebody off in traffic and they look over you. If you're somehow flexible enough, we could just put both arms and both legs in the air. Just give them that fucking baby grin. (laughs) That might have been the creepiest image I've ever I've ever thought of. There you go. It would just creep them out. Be like, oh, my God, should that guy even be driving? I think there's something wrong with them in a mental department there. Um. So anyways, I want to thank everybody that came out to the, uh, the shows at the Fountain Street Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, it is and it is continuing to be one of my favorite gigs I've ever done. Um, I know I always say I'm going to put up pictures. Like I didn't put up a picture of my drum kit like I said I was going to. And I'll tell you why. Because, uh, you know, I got these cymbal stands. And the ones that I want, I just wanted the single bracket ones. I don't like those double bracket like I'm going to go play in a fucking hurricane. They weigh 9,000 goddamn pounds. Um, I accidentally ordered those instead of the ones I wanted. So I had to return those, and now today I'm going to pick up the right ones. I just want to have it all set up when you see it. I want you to see it, right? I want it to have the fucking right look. I'm not going to have it like, you know, here's the car I bought, and I don't have the the, the fucking the tires on it. So... Um, But speaking of drums, um, my booking agent, my Ruben Kincaid, is, uh, you know, I was telling him how much fun I have when I go on the road if I find a place where I can go play drums. He goes, you know, we could put it in your rider that, you know, anytime you do a couple nights at a theater, they can set up a drum kit there. I go, get the fuck out of here. That sounds like some diva shit. He goes, and he goes, dude, they, they have music acts there all the time. It's no big deal. So I was like, all right. So I show up at the Fountain Street Church and uh, they had a fucking, they had, a, they had this Yamaha kit with this fucking horrific white trash, like leopard skin wrap. I don't even know what, I don't even know what to call it. It was like somewhere between the Stray Cats way back in the day and uh, Poison, maybe, you know. It actually looked like the fucking stretchy pants that the slutty girls would wear at the heavy metal concerts. It was the same kind of print. And I'm looking at those things going like, what the fuck are these? And she goes, don't worry. Everybody always says that. Sit down and play them. And the kick sounded amazing. And I was able to, thanks to my drum teacher, you know, I have a game plan when I try to tune something up. And I got the snare to sound great. And um, I went in on this fucking hilarious. I go in there on Saturday to play. I'm like about an hour before the doors open. 
So I went in there and I was fucking wailing on him. And when I got off the kit, I, you know, I, wa- I was literally like in like the place where the priest dresses and shit, you know, puts on all the fucking flowing ponchos and shit. And I walked out and there was no one in the church. And I walked in the parking lot and there was like fucking six of the security guys just standing out there. <laughs> I was like, sorry. Sorry. It was still a lot. Would have been great if they actually had him out on the stage. I would have left him there for the show. Wouldn't have bugged me, but uh, it would have sounded fucking unbelievable. Um, this giant church. And I didn't realize because, you know, last time I played there, I only played one night. It kind of came in town. I did it. I was like, what the hell was that? That was fucking incredible. And then I left. But um, this time, you know, I was there for like uh, two days, three nights. And I was able to read up on like the history of it. Listen to this shit. This is all the people that perform there because there was no bigger venue. That was the biggest venue in the, uh, I guess, Western Michigan or whatever, or at least in Grand Rapids. So if anybody big came there, they went there. Everyone, Winston Churchill spoke there. Helen Keller spoke there. Blind and deaf, learned how to fucking read and write and speak somehow. Figure that one out. Um, Who else? Uh, Amelia Earhart, Malcolm X. Did I say Winston Churchill? Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, Dave Brubeck, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, U2 in like 1984 played there. I think Zeppelin and Pink Floyd was obviously on their first tours. And uh, that's, just, that's just what I can remember. I'm trying to picture when I was looking at the wall, who else I saw there. I mean, it was fucking incredible. Eleanor Roosevelt. And they had, like, pictures of them. And then, like, their little thank you notes and shit. It was fucking ridiculous. B.B. Uh, King. And then me. <laughs> I think I said that in the video that I took, which I will actually post. And I promise you, I'll give you a picture of my, uh, my drum kit uh, this week. Um, so, anyways, we are on to episode two of F is for Family. We're recording the first one. Just remember this. Just remember me telling you this. We're recording the first one. On J- July 18th, 2017. You wait to see how long it takes before you fucking see it. Fucking animation, man. Takes forever. Um, but anyways, let us let me talk about... Uh, what should I talk about here? How about this? How about how great fucking Grand Rapids is? And it's one of my favorite cities. I was there with Dean Del Rey. And he was fucking murdering all week. And he had, he had a bunch of fans came out too, people flying in to see him. And then he went on to Detroit to go play some rock club like after, uh, after our show Saturday night. But there was this place, I of course, I course forget the fucking name of it. Um, but they had all these old video games in there. The fuck was it called? And why is my stomach still growling? I had a bowl of cereal. I'm trying to starve myself before the fucking acting gig. Um, oh, by the way, thank you for all your guys' suggestions sec, slash criticism of my, my dieting or whatever. This guy goes, dude, you can't say you're crushing it. You know, you crushed it if at night you're still having a drink or two. It's like, I, I, you fucking, you think I don't realize that, mom? Yes, I realize that. Um, but anyways, uh, what was it called? Stella's or some shit? I can't fucking remember. But... Uh, we went down there, and they, evidently they had a great burger, which I didn't have. Went to this healthy place and got this fucking wrap. Ugh, right? And a water. Water! And then uh, we went over there because they had all these pinball machines and shit, and me and Dean are fucking old as shit, and we walked in there. They only had one pinball machine, but they had all these great um, old uh, video games. And we showed up, right? And we sounded like two fucking kids. Dean just goes, they got asteroids. <laughs> I think we blew 10 bucks playing that. Um, I've never been one of those guys. never been a video game guy. Just haven't been. Because they're so fucking awesome. They were like addicting. But that is something. Remember back in the day when you would watch MTV Cribs and then like these fucking people would have these video games in their, uh, in their houses and uh, I used to always think like, I always feel like you buy those and then you never fucking use them. Like you use it for like the first day and then it's just like, oh, wait, I got to go to work. You know, I have to work so I can pay for this big, giant, stupid machine that I could have just pumped a couple of quarters into and let somebody else own and deal with the fucking maintenance. However, if I was ever going to buy one, it would be Asteroids. And my number two is a game that not a lot of people know about. 
And um, I think for the most part, they've all disappeared. Uh, it was a fucking great game. At least I loved it. It was called Elevators. And it was basically, it, I, if I vaguely remember it, it was like spy versus spy kind of thing. You were dressed in white and all the bad guys were dressed in black, almost kind of looking like dressed like the spy versus spy from uh, Mad Magazine. And you had to so you get in an elevator and on each floor, there were these bad guys. And as you passed the floor, they'd be shooting at you from the right or, t- or from the left. And you had to get all the way up to the top of the building and get something and then come back down again. And the worst was when you were going back down again, and you'd be shooting at the guy, and the guy would duck, and he'd lay down on the floor. And as you went by, when you couldn't raise your gun up, and it was just your head at floor level, he'd blow your fucking brains out. Um, I used to play that one. I'd buy either one of those, I guess. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's a fucking waste of money. But I, whatever. We had a great time, and I got a killer picture of Dean in his total fucking rock star pose playing the game. And uh, I think he already tweeted it out. So if you look at Dean Del Rey's twitter thing you can find that shit so we did that and i want to thank people at dr grin's comedy club i went down there and uh did a quick spot you know went up did some jokes or whatever and it was funny when dean was up there he fucking started trashing this woman who was sitting in the front row because she wouldn't shut up and i said to the other comics go there going i've like it was one of those deals as a comedian you'll be on stage and someone's talking and commenting on your jokes and then you don't realize most of the crowd can't hear it. So you're kind of supposed to ignore it, I guess, even though it's driving you nuts. So he just fucking snaps and trashes her. And I was sitting in the back of the club. I said to the other comedians, it's like, you know, it's funny. We couldn't even hear what she said. Um, you probably should have just kept going. I go, I've made that mistake 20,000 fucking times. Then I went up next and I did the exact same thing, exact same thing. And I fucking trashed her. And then she got mad, you know, Said she was offended by f- some fucking joke I did about the troops or some shit like that. It's like, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. I know when you got offended, you fucking egomaniac. When I looked at it, I said something to the effect of, why would you think that you have anything interesting to say? It was one of those lines, which was just really, you know, now that I've said it out loud and I've kind of gotten out of the emotion, it was, uh, it was really mean. I went mean. That's what I did. I went fucking mean. Um... So anyways, oh, by the way, somebody tried to scam me. They tried to scam old freckles. Who do you think you're dealing with here, huh? Some fucking ra- bald Ralph Malf looking motherfucker where you are. That doesn't mean you can scam me, though. They almost did. If I wasn't so fucking paranoid. Um, I'm hanging in the hotel and I get this phone call and I pick it up and it's just this computer going, oh, that's saying that they were calling from Apple. And that there was a problem with my iCloud and somebody might be breaking into it. And they go, you know, call this number, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, you got to be fucking kidding me. So I start and and they say the number twice. I can't remember it. So I just start taking a guess. And I punched in like out of the, you know, 10 numbers, you know, one, eight, 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 whatever. I got about six in and it immediately starts dialing. And I somehow get connected. Now, right there, that should have like tipped me off that these people are just fishing Looking for somebody to react to it. So I dialed like six of the fucking 10 digits I needed. And then this guy's like, hello? Uh, And I was like, yeah, you guys just called. Well, what is this referring to? It's like, you fucking called me. It's about my SoundCloud or whatever. And they go, oh, yes, yes, you have a security problem. Uh, And I go, well, whose fucking fault is that? I go, why did you guys set up the cloud if it wasn't going to be like safe? Now you've exposed me all this shit because what? I fucking, because I downloaded the Royal Blood fucking album. Now all of a sudden somebody's going to drain my bank account, you computer cunts. I wasn't cursing, but I was flipping out. And then he goes, so sir, we can help you. We can help you over the phone. We just need to access your computer. I go, what do you mean access my computer? And the guy just starts talking. I, I go, I go, I don't want to do that over the phone. He goes, sir, this is a very, this is a secure fucking blah, blah, blah. And I go, well, how do I, how do I know? Because you say so? Basically, I wouldn't fucking do it just because I, I was looking at, I was looking at them like they were legit, but I was just like, well, you already got hacked. Why the fuck would I go with you again? Why don't I just go to the store? So it literally got to the point. He goes, sir, this is, this is a secure, but blah, 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 blah. I just kept going like, well, I don't even know who you are. 
You just, for all I know, you're one of the guys fucking tr- trying to hack into my computer. Dude, I, f- I literally felt like I was in the born identity, you know, when you don't know who to trust, you know, and you're just fucking yelling at the other guy going, you put your gun down. You put your gun down first, right? So finally, he, he gives up on me and he goes, well, here's your case number and, uh, you know, I'll fucking, you know, he says some dumb shit. You've been to Turkey or Jordan recently? It's like, no, no, I saw the 30 for 30 on Len Bias when he fucking went one-on-one against Michael Jordan. You, you call in Michigan, you fucking asshole. So anyways, he ends up transferring me and it just fucking hangs up. And then I'm like flipping the fuck out. So I called the guy who produces my fucking show. And he just goes, what? He goes, yeah, Apple doesn't call anybody. He goes, nah, man, that's just bullshit. So thank God I'm a paranoid jackass or I might have let something happen there. So I'm just putting that out there. Let you know, I'm sure all you young guys know what it is and you feel so smart and you're going to shake your head and laugh your ass off at me on Twitter going like, oh, I can't. Hey, fuckhead, how do you know? Like, it's 2017. Um, I learned that back in 2010. Did you? What else did you learn? How not to play a guitar and then still call yourself a musician? Oh, Bill. Oh, Bill. Come on. Let's not be the old guy here, huh? I got to be honest with you. Uh, Del Rey played me some of that Skrillex guy stuff And I fucking really liked it I thought it was way different than anybody else And that's what I'm learning Whenever something new comes out As much as your old ears listen to it And say what the fuck is that You just have to know that there's gonna be The fucking The Jimi Hendrix, the Richard Pryor The Tom Brady The James Brown The fucking, there's gonna be You got to find out who that person is of the thing that you're listening to, and then you can judge it, okay? It goes, I swear to God, it goes right back to New York pizza. All these fucking dopes get off the fucking plane. The first place that says famous New York pizza, they eat it, and then they go, this pizza sucks here. It's like, no, you you didn't go to the right place, okay? You didn't go to the right place. And um, DJs are like New York's pizza in that fucking everybody thinks they can do it. You know, and everybody's claiming that they're the real fucking deal. And everybody's saying they're famous. Everybody's famous Ray, the fucking DJ. And um, I actually, I really liked his shit. I was like, you know what? I could actually fucking get in a car and drive, listen to this shit, especially at night. Like there's great, like driving songs, like the who eminence front. If you ever want win a bunch of fucking money playing poker. That's it. Just get your money, leave, get in your car by yourself. The fucking window down and you listen to that song as you drive out into the desert. I'm telling you, it's going to be one of the top five moments of your life. (laughs) Oh, fuck you. I'm old. Um, Anyways, what else? What else did I want to talk about? Oh, did you guys watch all the Mayweather um, McGregor? Pressers, as they call them overseas, the press conferences. It was kind of the same thing over and over again. With Conor McGregor, he just kept going like, what the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with you? He's got on a fucking track suit. <laughs> that form Voltron thing was dumb, and I loved when he trashed him on that. But I will tell you this, watching all of those people showing up for a fucking press conference... They sold out the Barclays Center. They sold out where, like, the Maple Leafs play, I believe, in Toronto. The Staples Center. People showing up to watch a fucking press conference. I can tell you this. Oh, cynical Bill's going to ruin the pay-per-view for you. Those press conferences are going to be better than the fight. You know? And the fucking people that are going to order that goddamn fight are the same fucking people that slow down on the highway to watch somebody change a fucking tire. Um, It's, like, it's just beyond... It's beyond a spectacle. And hey, people go like, hey, you know, I know it's a spectacle, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to watch it to fucking watch it. Um, yeah, I know I'm getting fucked in the ass, but hey, I want to see what it feels like. <laughs> Dude, that pay-per-view can go fuck itself. Dude, they're riding on the same plane over to fucking London. Get the fuck out of here. And all this shit McGregor gives Mayweather, there's one topic he completely avoids because it would fuck with ticket sales, which kind of makes him part of the fucking bullshit of that whole thing. You know what I mean? It's just get the fuck out of here. I'm not, given, I've given that guy enough fucking goddamn money. Given him enough fucking money. I've gotten fucked enough. 
I've gotten fucked enough by that guy. Where, like, it's professional boxers can't lay a fucking hand on him, and I'm, bo- I'm fucking nodding off by the eighth round as he's poo 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 pointing him to fucking death. Um, now he's going to fight a guy who's not even a bo- who used to box. I love that. Hey, used to box. Yeah. There's a lot of people who used to do stand up. You want to see them do an HBO special? Um, here's the bottom line. If they ever met each other in a bar and started swinging, McGregor would fucking kill him. He'd take him to the ground and then Mayweather wouldn't know what to do. So they've eliminated all of that. We know, Bill, you've said that. So I don't know. Um, anyways, maybe McGregor's, I mean, Mayweather's ego, maybe he tries to knock him out. I'm just not, I'm not going to fucking watch it. I'm really not. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out on the highway when the fucking fight is on and just cruise down the highway doing 90 miles an hour, just looking around going like, this is what it should be like. Like if I was running shit, this would be the level of people that were in the world. I was joking on my, on this weekend in uh, Grand Rapids saying, you know what I would do if I was running shit on the night of the Mayweather McGregor fight, I would turn all the Buffalo wild wings into gas chambers. <laughs> All those fucking mouth-breathing morons that wear jerseys, you know, with other men's names on the back. All day, all day, do what I say, do what I called it. All of those guys just, you just, gone. All of them gone. And you'd watch. I bet, I bet the, the mean, the level of meanness on, on, on the internet would go down, you know? These, I, by the way, these fucking people now who just sit there and they watch CNN or Fox all day long and then they show up to you and they just start vomiting out all this fucking fearful shit that they just watched. And then after they do that and get you all stirred up, they don't even have the decency to offer a fucking solution. All these fucking morons. It's just like, why would you sit there and watch Fox News all day? That's all you're going to do? Watch a little CNN. Balance out your fucking lies. Keep yourself level. Fucking what's his face? My buddy was telling me this weekend, you know, it's going to global warming is going to get so hot. You know, they're saying they're not going to be able to fly planes out of LaGuardia. And I'm and immediately I'm thinking like, oh, how the fuck am I going to be a comedian anymore? You know, and then that was it. He didn't offer any fucking solutions. He just let me know like, hey, in the future, you're not going to be able to do your job. And then I'm starting to fucking think about, you know, me and my family living out in the street. All I want to do is just, I just want to play a little asteroids. You know? If you don't have a fucking solution, don't bring up the goddamn problem. Okay? Like I brought up the Conor McGregor Mayweather. All right? I said it's a fucking problem. I gave you your solution. You drive on the highway 90 miles an hour and you turn the Buffalo Wild Wings into a gas chamber. See that? See that? I'm a good guy. Everybody else is an idiot. In my world... I'm the smartest person in the room. Sorry. Well, what do you want? What the fuck do you want from me? You know? I'm watching my kid all day today. My wife's fucking tired. Yeah, I can't type in my goddamn password. We're all not watching it now, obviously, while I'm doing the, the uh, podcast. But that's only because I curse so much. And I'm trying not to do that in front of her, which I know I'm going to fail fucking miserably. Um, but I got to tell you something, dude. Being a, being a dad is this shit. It really is. I fucking love it. You know what's the best thing about it is watching kids shows. I don't know if I'm a fucking moron or whatever, but I am legitimately entertained. We started watching Cars this morning. It's tremendous. I mean, you know what it is? I haven't watched cartoons in so fucking long. It, it, like the level of animation on those things is crazy. Like I think I saw one of those Toy Stories, one or two of them. But you know, when, when, you, when you don't have a kid, it's like, you know, wh- why would you go see one of those? Unless you smoke weed, like, hey, man, let's get high and go see fucking toys, man, right? Or, you know, you're dating a woman. They always like seeing those. They're cute. I like to message. And you end up going there, and you're just sitting there. I just fucking, um, I remember I, one of those toy stories, like, they were going down something, and they were all this conveyor belt, and they went into a pit of flames. And the level of fucking anxiety that it brought me, I got, like, angry at the movie. Like, this is a fucking kid's movie. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Why do I care so much about these goddamn toys? Um, which is one of the reasons why I don't watch movies. It's because I, I take the fucking ride. You know, when people watch scary movies, and they go, dude, that movie didn't scare me. They all scare the fuck out of me because I just, I, I take the fucking ride. 
I never just, I never fucking pull myself out and look around the theater going, this is just a movie. There's no reason to get this fucking upset. This is stupid. That's just an actor. I wonder how many takes they did. I don't do that. I get sucked in and it, it's fucking over. It's fucking over. And then I end up getting freaked out and uh, I walk to my car, you know, and I'm thinking that the, the fucking Blair Witch is going to get me. Um, all right. I think I've, I think I've babbled long enough here. Let's, let's do a little bit of, uh, let's do a little, some advertising. Let's get to actually the funniest part of the podcast. Me trying to read out loud. All right. Framebridge, everybody. Oh, you know what? Framebridge evidently is the easiest way to custom frame your favorite art and photos. Is it? You can't, you know, you know what the easiest way is you give it to your partner. Could you do me a huge favor and handle this big pain in the ass fucking job? Um, but if you're actually cool and you don't want to do that to your wife or your husband or your fucking transgendered person, whatever, I'm trying to be politically correct here, whatever the fuck you're living with. Maybe you're agoraphobic and asexual. Split personality. Don't do it to the other person in you. Okay, did I cover everybody? Um, without ever leaving your house, uh, with their simple online ordering process, you can order a fully customized piece in minutes. Here's how it works. Go to framebridge.com. Upload your photo from your computer or directly from your Instagram feed. Have you been to Jordan lately? Or if you have a physical item, they'll provide secure prepaid packaging so you can mail it in for free. Preview your photo online in any frame or style. Choose your favorite or get help for free. Free help from the talented designers. The expert team at Framebridge will custom frame your item in days, not weeks or months, and deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. Now, now if this was me, I end the copy here. Honestly, how much longer can you talk about photos in a fucking frame? But not, not these guys. They're, they're going to keep going. Uh, the best part, you may not have asked, instead of the hundreds you pay at framing stores, their prices start at just $39. 39 Sam Cunningham. And all shipping is free. Plus, my listeners will get 15% off their first order at framebridge.com when they use my code BURR. All right, I guess you needed to know how much it costs. Framebridge even offers a happiness guarantee. If for any reason you aren't 100% satisfied with your order, they'll make it right. Well, then you should have a satisfaction guarantee, not a happiness. We have a happiness guarantee that if you're not 100% satisfied, that doesn't make any sense. If you're not 100% happiness right? Happiness guarantee. If, if you, for any reason, are 100% happy with your order, they'll make it right. Oh, Jesus. Give your personal experience using framers. I never fucking used it. I need you guys. I never know why. I don't have to, every fucking photo I've took in the last 20 years, I don't even know where it is. It's on a hard drive in the back of my closet. Um, and I took so many fucking pictures of shit. Like, I, what are you going to even use it for? Uh, the site, the ease of order, and how your piece turned out, and how easy and affordable it was. Get started today framing your photos or art. Dude, they should have a fucking website. Uh, useless cell phone pics. You know those ones you just have? You took a screenshot of something because you needed to remember a phone number, and then like months later, you're scrolling back trying to find that picture of you when you got on the hang glider, and one of the photos you got to scroll past is the fucking 1 800 number for the Smokey Robinson CDs, you know? I don't know, would that be funny to sit there and look at the top 10 worthless cell phone photos of the day? And then people would do it on purpose. So it'd probably be cool for like a month. All right, go to framebridge.com and use promo code BURR. You'll save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go to framebridge.com, promo code BURR. Framebridge.com, promo code BURR. That's classic advertising read. The last time you do it, you have that tone. Framebridge.com, everything's going to be all right. All right, Helix, everybody. You're unique. You don't walk like everyone else, talk like everyone else, shoot, chat, sleep like everyone else. So why is your mattress, why is your mattress one size fits all? Because a truly customized mattress will cost you five to 10,000 bucks until now. I can't believe that's the right number. Go to helix.com, answer a few simple questions, and they'll run. Do you sleep on your back or you sleep on your dick? And they'll run a 3D biomechanical model of your body through the proprietary algorithms they've developed with the help of the world's leading ergonomics and biomechanic experts. The result? A robot shows up to the door, punches you in the face through the mattress that you ordered, and becomes you. Sorry. The most comfortable mattress <laughs> you've ever slept on. 
Helix customers report a 30% improvement in overall sleep quality. And for couples, they customize each side of the mattress. That's the end of the relationship right there. You're starting to build separate lives. Your mattress arrives at your door in about a week, and shipping is 100% free. That's why everyone from GQ Magazine to Forbes are all talking about Helix Sleep. Um, you have 100 nights to try it out, and if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for free. Gross! And you have a 100% refund, no questions asked. Go to helixsleep.com slash burr and get $50 off your order. That's helixsleep.com slash burr. Hey, helixsleep.com slash burr. One of those pronunciations is right. Oh, my God, everybody, it's Dollar Shave Club, dude. Dollar Shave Club is the smarter choice. Why, you might have asked? You'll get a great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your door. You're going to be set for life, kid. You no longer have to schlep to the store, buy cheap disposable razors. That give you a cheap shave or spend a fortune on razors with gimmicky shaving technology you don't even fucking need. And when you use Dollar Shave Club's executive razor with their Dr. Coffee's Easy Shave, the blade gently glides, giving you a smooth shave as you travel across your ball bag. Dr. Carver's shave butter is transparent for a more precise shave, helps prevent ingrown hairs, and fights razor bumps. So in other words, it works for white people and black people. Make the smarter choice by going to Dollar Shave Club for a limited time. New members get their first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver Shave Butter for only $5 with free shipping. After that, the razors are just a few bucks a month. That's, 15, that's a $15 value for only 5 bucks. There's no hidden fees and no commitments. Cancel anytime you like. You can only get this offer exclusively at dollyshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollyshaveclub.com slash burr. I fucking love those guys just for the simple fact that it's just one paragraph. They have empathy for me, I feel. All right, one more. Can you guys handle me reading out loud? Uh, Wink. W-I-N-C. Or is it Wink? It is W-I-N-C. Whiskey. India, November, Charlie. Uh, when you have a great cl- when you have a great glass of wine, it enhances the moment. <laughs> Whether you're reflecting on the day or with someone you love, or just overly explaining something to three people who have been bored with you for twenty minutes, depending on how drunk you are. Wink understands this. It's why they started their company, to give you access to exceptional wines from around the world, so you have more of those moments of being drunk around your children. Uh, No, I'm just kidding. Nobody who drinks wine is... Oh, women do. Women drink wine after they put the kids down, right? Then they pull it out. Uh, Fucking bite the cork off like a fucking pirate. And you know what? God bless them. They deserve to do that. Just try wink.com, spelled T-R-Y-W-I-N-C.com. Try wink.com. Take a brief palate profile quiz, and Wink will recommend distinct and interesting, interesting wines actually customized to your palate to be shipped directly to your door every month. Isn't it hilarious that you can do this with alcohol? You can never do this with like crack cocaine, you know? Take a brief palate profile quiz and we'll get you the crack pipe that best fits your lips. None of your time is wasted fitting in a run to the store or on your way home from work or on your way to an, an event or gathering. No more time spent guessing what you might like. That's actually great. There's nothing worse as an adult when you go over a couple's you know, should we bring anything? No, we're all good. You know, you got to bring a bottle of wine. Then you got to stop at the fucking door, the, 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 the store. It's a pain in the ass. Just stock up on booze with trywink.com because Wink bases the wines they send, they send you on your taste preferences. Wink will even introduce you to new, rare, and custom wines that are not available anywhere else and tell you the story behind each one. Join for free. Skip any month, cancel any time, and have 100% satisfaction guarantee so you never have to pay for a bottle you don't like. And right now, Wink is offering listeners $20 off your first order when you go to trywink.com. They'll even cover the cost of shipping. That's trywink.com, spelled T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com slash burr to get $20 off your first order, plus complimentary shipping. That's trywink.com slash burr. All right. What are we up to? 34 fucking minutes. Oh, you know what? I didn't even talk about the F1 race. Did you guys watch it? Did you check it out? Lewis Hamilton closing the gap only down by one point. Catching up on Sebastian Vettel. What happened to the Ferraris? Out there in fucking Great Britain. What was it? Kimi Raikkonen? Whatever his fucking name is. 
He's driving. He's in third place. He's loving life for second place, whatever he was in his front tire. Blow! Fucking blows out with like fucking four or five laps to go. And then he fucking gets on the radio. The towns are like, oh, bah, 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 bah. and he goes for the fucking front to tire. Right. So he's got to go in. Vettel moves up. He's going to be on the podium as much as fucking uh, Lewis Hamilton's going to pick up 25 points. He's going to pick up at least fucking 15, if not 18. All right. Who knows? You know, and all of a sudden, fucking two laps to go, Blah! his fucking tire goes out. Front left one, right? And then all the Italians are like, Mamma mia, right? And fucking Vettel's all goddamn pissed. I think I have a, I think I know who my favorite fucking driver is, though. I like that, uh, however you say his first name, Val- Val- Valtteri uh, Botas. That guy, that guy can fucking drive. He went from ninth place all the way to second place. Now, I know I've talked about Lewis Hamilton and these guys going from fucking, you know, ninth, like, uh, what's his face yesterday? The Australian fucking dude there. The, the happiest guy in fucking Formula One. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. If I, I swear to God, if I know the fucking names in front of me. Uh, you know what it is? It's that raking in. There's too many R's. There's too many fucking, like, cr- crazy fucking, the nerve of these people to be part from, like, other cultures. Is it, what is it, Dave? Is it Dave? Dave fucking, uh, Jesus, I only met the fucking guy. I've only been rooting for him. Daniel Ricardo. There we go. I knew the fuck it would pop back into my head. As much as those guys have gone from like 19th to fucking, you know, 7th or 8th or 15th to whatever, it, it, I think it's harder to go from 9th all the way up to 2nd because you get into like the best of the best drivers. To fucking go past driver number five, four, three, to get all the way up to that, starting way, as far back as he did with the Mercedes, once again, having a gearbox issue. That's what happens with Mercedes. They have a gearbox issue, and they get a five-spot fucking penalty. And evidently, I don't know who the fuck it is that's supposed to be working on that fucking shock absorber on the front left-hand side of the car or the fin or the fucking tire, whatever the fuck it is. One of those guys... Wearing the underoos with the helmet on in the pit. Somebody back there is getting a fucking, is getting no pasta this week on the Ferrari team. So, um, what's his face? Vettel was up by like, I don't know how many fucking points. Um, I forget what place he came in. I think he got like six or eight points and he was up by like, he was up by 20 points before the race started. I can do the math here. And by the end of the race, he was only up by one. Uh, This is like a fucking math test. So Lewis Hamilton got 25 points. So he outscored him by fucking 24. So what, he come in 10th place? He got one point? No, that'd be 24. He got four points. All right, so he came in, he came in like eighth, right? I think he came in eighth. All right, whatever. Why, why the fuck would you care? So they got one more race before they take the, the break in the summertime. Like, they're, like their lives aren't fucking great enough. They're part of like, like literally 20 people who can do this in the fucking universe. All right. They get to take the fucking summer off. Unlike these poor bastards that play fucking baseball who got to pay like fucking six to seven games a goddamn week. You know, these guys get to take the summer off. Granted, they have to still diet, you know, but you know, even if they have like a shake, then they can, they can fucking get rid of it. Banging a supermodel, you know, fuck sweat it out of them. I mean, their lives are unbelievable. Lewis Hamilton and fucking, uh, what's his face? Botas, they both live in Monaco. It's unbel- It's like, it's not enough that, you, you know, he's got the private jet. Like, these fucking guys' lives are unbelievable. It's fucking tremendous. God bless them. Hey, what's going on with the fucking, the other Red Bull team that's not Red Bull, the blue ones? The fucking, uh, what the hell, are, what, the, what are they, the, 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 the Toro Rosa fucking team, whatever the fuck they're called? Jesus Christ, they were doing their impression of the Force India team, fucking slamming into each other. I love when that happens. I love that. It reminds me of that fucking, uh, that movie Step Brothers. They're doing like the Formula One version of putting their balls on Will Ferrell's drum kit. Oh no, he put it on the other guy's drum kit. That's right. I don't know. Anyways, let's get to the fucking questions this week. Um... Oh, by the way, uh, All Things Comedy's own Ari Shafir's new double Netflix special airs Tuesday, um, July 18th. Both double negative, uh, both, uh, both double negative children and double negative adulthood will be available in 190 countries. That's incredible, huh? 
the reach, the sheer reach of Netflix. All right, feminism, everybody. Let's do some fucking reads here for the goddamn week, shall we? I got 20 minutes left here in this fucking podcast. Um, All right, feminism. Bill, uh, on a recent podcast when discussing stewardesses and air travel, you mentioned that you sometimes thing, I think you meant to say think, feminism is a way for ugly women to get jobs that attractive women used to have. I said that. Why do you guys take anything I say seriously? You understand I'm just riffing for a fucking hour and I'm trying to make you laugh by saying ridiculously over the top things. Somebody's going to write me in a few weeks. going, Hey, Bill, a few weeks ago on your podcast, you suggested turning Buffalo Wild Wings into gas chambers on the night of the Mayweather McGregor fight. Uh, Just to let you know, I am a parent. I am not a fight fan, but I do enjoy the fucking (laughs) jalapeno balls, whatever the fuck they're called. At Buffalo Wild Wings. And what if I was there? Anyways, um, I wonder if, okay, you, you, evidently I said that feminism is a way for ugly women to get jobs that attractive women used to have. That's fucking hilarious. I don't necessarily believe that, but there is an element of truth to that. Like, you know, when they always bitching like, you know, Hollywood creates this impossible image of beauty. It's like, no, you can't, you can't. You're, you're, you're a fucking egomaniac. I don't think when I look at a Brad Pitt, whoever the fucking guy is now, Brad Pitt's like in his 50s now, so whoever the fucking shredded, who's the guy from Saved by the Bell, Mario Lopez? You know, when I, don't, when I look at him with his pigment and his fucking abs and all that, I don't fucking go, like, this is an impossible fucking, oh, Jesus. This is an impossible standard for me to, to, to standard for me to hold up to and, and therefore... Mario Lopez shouldn't be on fucking TV anymore. I just understand that, yeah, you know what? On a good day, maybe I'm a six. Okay? That's what I am. Not everybody can bat clean up in the order. Okay? If you fucking bat, Nath, quit your crying and get on base. That's it. Maybe I do believe that on some level. Anyways, I wonder if you know that this is actually Rush Limbaugh's undeniable truth of life number 24, specifically that feminism was established so as to allow unattractive women to access, access to the mainstream of society. <laughs> um, here's the thing. I'm saying this shit. I'm like 90% joking. There's always like an element of truth. That guy, as far as I can tell, because I don't know what his act is. It might all just be an act. You know, so he can eat because he is in show business. So I have no idea. It could just be an act. But if you actually truly believe that, I don't I listen, I don't believe that. OK. Um, feminism came about because men were not allowing women to pursue their dreams. OK. But like any cause, any cause, for whatever reason, along the way, a lot of the times you end up becoming what the fuck you were fighting, okay? And that's not this unique thought. I realize that's a hacky thought, but it's, it's fucking true. The level of bullying that goes on on the internet and trying to get people to get fired and trying to create firestorms and trying to, trying to show the power of women by a lot of times attacking people who you're deliberately and knowingly taking what they said out of context and causing them to not have a fucking job is fucking reprehensible, all right? And they, in a lot of ways, do the same reptilian, if the ends justify the means, corporate fucking mentality. Just some of this shit that that is said out there. Um, Yeah, look, I, I don't think that it's actually that, but sometimes I think it's that. You know, there are jobs that you should only get if you're good looking. You know, I, I really believe that. Like, uh, like when, when you, you know, the first person that they're going to fucking walk in the top of your order, you got to go with Ricky Henderson. You know, you got to get somebody who's going to get on base. You're going to put the fucking pitcher up. You know, and I, I feel like I can say this because of how I look. Like, if I ran a company, I'm not putting me on the front desk like I'm the first person you're going to see. <laughs> Why would you do that? We're trying to make money here. You know, I, I don't know. Like high school's over. Look in the mirror. Love yourself. But have a sense of humor about yourself. Know that you're not perfect. And just know that it's okay. And you know what? A lot of times, if you stare into that shit 
and you have a sense of humor about yourself, you're fun to be around. How many times do I call myself a pasty, bald, freckled fucking jackass? I'm telling you, you fucking stare into it and you fucking age gracefully. All right? You're starting to lose your fucking hair. You just shave your fucking head and just be that guy. And everybody's like, what the fuck? And then, but you know what? You, you deal with it. And then people, they respect you. Look at this guy. Came down the pike. He didn't even try to shake it off. He took the pitch right to the side of the head. There he is. He's standing on first base. Good for you, you ugly, bald son of a bitch. Right? And this is the thing, too. I know that they need ugly, bald son of a bitches in movies. And I'll just audition for that. At the end of the fucking day, I'm in a movie. Am I really going to complain? You know, I feel that fucking... <laughs> fucking bald, freckled redhead should be starring in more movies. It's like, oh, yeah, you want to put your money... Put your money where your mouth is. You go finance that fucking movie. Um... Yeah, in a lot of ways, that's one of those things where everybody should get like a uh, a ribbon. I mean, I don't know what the solution is, but you like competition is a good thing, okay? And the best, you know, the best should should win, right? Like I'm 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 all with it as far as everybody should have the same opportunity. But after that, go fuck yourself. Whoever's the best gets it. You know, not like, well, we have enough of these people or enough of those. No, who are the fucking best? Okay. When we have to keep doing that, because at some point, if the aliens aren't already here, they're coming here and we, we need to have an all-star fucking team, not a team that makes everybody feel represented. All right. There we go. I hope I explain myself or, you know, I'll, I'll know if I'm right. If I don't get a call from the Rush Limbaugh show asking me if I want to be a guest. <laughs> All right. Brother X feminine. Dear Billy Boyo, uh, relative, relatively new fan here. I loved your material, love your material, and I hope to see you live one day. Well, thank you. Before I start, I want to say that I don't care if my brother is gay. To each his own is my motto. Okay, now for the backstory. There you go. That's what I do. You've established, you've given yourself credibility because you said that you're a good person. All right, I'm 17, about to be a senior in high school. My brother is 11 and is about to start middle school. I feel like other kids will view him as an easy target for a few reasons. First, he doesn't have many guy friends and he hangs out with a lot of ladies. Second, I do. I try to do masculine things with him. I play baseball. So I always ask him to play catch with me. And I even offer to teach him how to play the sport. He usually says no. When I try to do any sort of physical activity with him, he rejects my request and just does his own thing. Third, his body language is quite feminine. He sits like a girl, talks like a girl, and moves his hands like a girl. You know what I'm saying, and the thing that ladies and gay guys do with their hands, oh, you know what I'm saying, the thing that ladies and gay guys do with their hands when they talk, my gut tells me to sit down and have a talk with him, but I don't want to come off too blunt and hurt his feelings. Then again, that could be what he needs. Uh, I think if I tell him what I'm thinking, he'll just blow it off. Just like me, he's very hot-headed. Um, sorry about the hyphen. I personally blame his behavior on the pussification of society over the past few years and the very progressive environment of modern-day schooling. He's a good kid, and he's got a good head on his shoulders, so I'm not worried about anything else. I'm just looking out for him. I don't want any dickheads messing with him. I used to get bullied, so I know how it feels. What do you think? Uh, thanks, for your help and go fuck yourself. All right. I think you're 17 and I think you love your brother and you're trying to protect him. Um, here's the deal, dude. Uh, I mean, your brother is who your brother is. You got to accept that. And um, I don't know how you handle the bullying thing, which is I, what I really think is what you see when you look at your brother, it's like this kid's going to get the shit kicked out of him. Um, which is, uh, you know, sad to say, you know, hopefully not as much as when I was coming up. But yeah, that is a, that is a, it's a legit concern. Um, but um, I don't think, you, you listen, people are born how they're born. Okay, I don't know if this kid's gay or not. I don't know what, but if he doesn't want to play catch, he doesn't want to play catch. And if he's hot headed, you know, he's, he sound, he said he's a smart kid. He's hot headed. He knows what he wants. So just let him be himself. 
and you support them. And there's no reason why this kid, uh, he doesn't like to do physical shit. I was going to say, take him down to a dojo, teach him how to fuck somebody up. And um, the fact that he is effeminate, if he goes and fucks somebody up, that's going to be humiliating for the other person. And then nobody else is going to want to fuck with them because they don't want to get beat up by him. Bruce Lee used to do that. Bruce Lee used to, I read this book, he used to walk around and he would act all effeminate. And then these guys would come up and fuck with him. And then he would kick the shit out of him. People ask him, well, why would you do that? He said, well, if I just walked up like a regular dude, you know, they got their ass kicked, they could get over it. But if, you know, they thought they got their ass kicked by a sissy, you know, it stays with them. And unfortunately, that is something with guys. If, if, you know, if people were more progressive or whatever the fucking word is, they wouldn't think that. And they'd just be like, well, it doesn't make a difference if you're effeminate or masculine. If you can fucking throw hands over there with a couple of feetsies, I can, I can accept the loss. Um, I, listen, I would just, uh, if anything, I would try to have a closer relationship with my younger brother. And, um, and I would ask him how his days are going and I would just literally ask him, is anybody at school fucking with you or whatever? And, uh, if they are, I would, I don't know. I would go down and have a fucking talk. I don't know if he could do that. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, but that would, that as an older brother, that would kill me knowing that somebody could be fucking with my younger brother. So I think you come from a good place. Uh, your ideas of, uh, you know, how to cure him of that are understandable because you're 17. I don't think it's society's fault. Um, I, I, I just think that's just how he's born. And I think if you accept it, he will accept it and he'll keep a, a good feeling about himself. But um, unfortunately, the bullying is going to come and he's going to have to learn how to stick up for himself. I mean, that's just the truth of it. And um, there's all kinds of things that you could do that I'm not allowed to say on the podcast as far as what he could do in those moments because somehow I become this fucking bad person. But uh, I'm just going to tell a random story here. I remember Char- the late Charlie Murphy, rest his soul. He told me to do what to do if you ever go to jail. And I just remember, <laughs> he, just, he was like, you know, not that I could still survive. He was just like, yo, this is what you do. He goes, the first motherfucker that steps to you, he goes, you just turn into a wild animal, frothing at the mouth, and you just fucking swing for the fences. And everybody, you know, what? I'm oversimplifying what the fuck he said. And, um, you know, that's just a story he told me. That has nothing to do with what I just fucking read. Okay, I want to do that so I stay free and clear. I don't know what to tell you, buddy. All right, Uh, let him be who he is. And, um, you know, I would watch some MMA events with him and maybe he'll want to learn how to fucking do it. I don't know. I don't know. Because I watched some some cool videos of some kids that were way out of their own weight class. This one fucking kid fucked this kid up, jumped up, put him in a fucking arm bar. This kid didn't even know what the fuck to do. Um, Maybe you can help him out with that. But, uh, yeah, I would let go of all that other shit that you're going to fucking... I mean, if, 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 like... You're, you're who you are. I mean, if somebody went, you go out in the driveway and to learn how to twirl a baton, you just would still be you, but you'd know how to twirl a baton. I don't think it would change how you walked or behaved or who you hung out with. Um, you're wired how you're wired. All right. Uh, girlfriend wants to move back to her home. That's like those fucking people that, you know, they would try to cure gay people. You know, they think that they can, like it's uh, like they have the mumps or something. Uh, girlfriend wants to move back to her home country. Uh, all right. Hey, Bill Hill. If the guy took the woman's last name in marriage, that's funny. All right. Long time listener. First time advice seeker. I live in London. I met my girlfriend online a year and a half ago. She's 25 and I'm 24. She's from Switzerland. See, this is what happens now. With all these fucking dating apps. Fun fact about Switzerland. They have enough nuclear bunkers to accommodate their entire population. Uh, yeah, that's because they're so close to fucking Germany. Um, they moved here a few years ago to get a music... Uh, she moved here a few years ago to get a music degree and graduated, graduated last year. She was going to move in with a friend a few months ago, but her best friend did a 180 at the last second. So we decided to move in together as we enjoy each other's company. 
Here's the shit part. She always said that she misses her family and her friends a lot, which is, of course, understandable. But recently, she's been mentioning that she wants to move back to Switzerland once our lease is up next year. I completely get why she would want to do this. She doesn't have many friends here. Uh, as many of her college friends have moved back home. The thing is, I have established an established career here, and I don't want to leave my friends a job behind to go move to a country where I don't speak the language. I've tried, but there are hardly any courses for Swiss slash German. Um, and the market for my skills is much smaller. I'm a magician and academic tutor. Jesus, there's a fucking combo. Uh, whenever she brings it up, I answer with very variations of, well, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but I'm pretty sure I'm never going to come around to the idea. She has made the point a couple of times that this would be me choosing my career and friends over her, which makes it sound worse than it is. What should I tell her? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Well, she's choosing her country and her family over you. So I would say nicely, listen, you keep saying that this is me choosing my career and, you know, what did she say? My, and friends over her. Um, do you know that feeling you have when you live here in London? That's what I'm going to feel like when I'm in Switzerland. Do you want me to feel that? No. Well, good. I don't want to feel that either. So one of us has to make a sacrifice here. Are you willing to live here? And if she says no, then you have to be willing to live there. And if you're not willing to do that, then you guys need to break up. It's simple as that. Simple as that. Um, I, I, would, I would fucking... That's it, dude. You know, you, you got to fucking... These goddamn kids today. You know, fucking swiping left the next thing you know. Yeah, my girlfriend lives in fucking... Bangladesh, and uh, she's really missing some of the food over there. And I, you know, and I fucking, you know, whatever the fuck I do over here. I mean, these are these are like modern day relationship fucking problems. Um, yeah, that's it. One of you guys has to move, but don't let her guilt you. She's not choosing her and her friends. You're doing what she's doing. You're living where you want to live next to the people you love, and you can't get mad at her for wanting to do the exact same thing. All right, but you know. She's trying to mind fuck. You know, for me, I just feel like you're choosing this. Go fuck yourself. All right, well, go back home then. Send me some chocolates. We'll bang every once in a while. We'll meet in Paris. How about that? That's it. I don't know what to tell you. All right, girlfriend, you came to my place, not the other way around. Um, girlfriend's belly hangs past her tits. Oh, Jesus. Hey there, Bill, uh, hey there, Billy Willie Freckle Cheeks. I uh, love the podcast, especially when you and Nia do the podcast. I know, and I got to get her on here more, but it's just like when I do it, she has to watch the kid and the other way around. All right. I got a problem that I'm hoping you and Nia may be able to help me with. I love my wife of seven years dearly. We have fun together, make each other laugh, etc. She's my best friend. We're in our early 30s, have no children, and are very affluent, crushing it, except for the sex. The sex is bad because we have become fatty fat fats. We've been together for a decade, uh, and this has only become a problem over the past six months. I'm 5'11 and 240 with a lot of muscle and a lot of fat. She's 5'4 and 200 and has no muscle mass. I'm ashamed to say that even though I love her fiercely, she's no longer physically attractive to, to me. Well, I mean, what the fuck? I mean, you're just being honest. I'm sure you're not as attracted to her. Although you did give yourself some props for having a little bit of muscle. You didn't quite say you were as big a mess. I'm ashamed to say that he, okay, um, she probably feels the same. Okay, he said that. She probably feels the same. She used to be 140 tops and was curvy in all the right places. I used to be cut like a Greek god. Our sex life was amazing. She'd have one to three orgasms. Jesus Christ. Every time we had sex, uh, one to three times per week. And now maybe we have sex once a month. She can't climax anymore because she gets too tired. Jesus, over the past six weeks, I've cut 10 pounds and exercised six times a week. I'm trying, but I have a long way to go. She isn't trying to eat right and is not interested in exercising with me. I know sex tends to dwindle over time, but I'd like for us to be in good enough shape that we don't need a nitroglycerin pill every time we try to do the dirt. Any advice would be much appreciated. Thanks and go fuck yourself. You have to sit down and have an honest conversation with her. Okay. I would leave the sex life out of it. It's just like she's not going to live long. All right. Um, at 5'4", 200 pounds, 
Uh, maybe you can start by going for, quote, romantic walks. And uh, you hold her hand and then you try to pick up the pace and drag her along. <laughs> I would just, yeah, I would talk to her um, about it. And uh, if she chooses not to get in shape, then I, I would not alter what you're doing. I would go back to being the Greek god that you were. And um, if she doesn't want to get in shape, then, you know, what are you supposed to do? Watch her eat herself into an early fucking grave? You're supposed to be with somebody that you're not sexually attracted to anymore? I mean, that, that's fair, man. If somebody puts on almost like she put on almost half her body weight. I mean, that's not, uh, that's not fair. It's not fair to yourself and it's not fair to the person you're in. You got to be making an effort to, to, to still look good. You know, and people have a tendency, men and women, to do that, to become, you know, you know, just walking around, fucking shitty looking clothes, just being a tub of shit. And it's just like that whole, you should accept me for whatever I am. That means I'm going to be the least of who I could be. Nobody ever says that when they're, they're the best. Yeah, I'd like to accept you fucking going to the goddamn gym. Same way you'd like me to not fucking have my belly hanging down past my junk. Um, yeah, I'd have a conversation with her. Just sit down. Hey, you know what? Maybe uh, my beautiful daughter's asleep. Maybe uh, Nia can come in and help. Hang on a second. Let me hit pause here. Ah, she can't do it. She can't do it. Sorry. Sorry to get your goddamn hopes up. So uh, just know that... Um, that you just got advice from a guy. So what I would do is uh, I would ask a woman in your life, not her, advice on how to, how to drop in, okay? Because this is one of these relationship conversations. It's like when a spaceship is reentering the atmosphere, the space shuttle, that if it wasn't at the right fucking angle, you know, or you lost a couple of those fucking shingles on the bottom, you could fucking burn up on reentry. All right. Did I really have to bring up that tragedy to make my point? I don't know. Maybe I didn't. All right. Girlfriend has severe halitosis. Jesus Christ. The women are getting destroyed. Here. Ladies, ladies, you got to write in next week. Okay. You got to write in next week. Okay. Stop being sweethearts and tell me what the problem is with the guys. This is, this is not fair and balanced like Fox News is <laughs> or CNN. Um, I love that chick that cried on CNN, the one with the Mary Lou Retton haircut when Trump got elected. It's just like, it was one of the most unprofessional journalistic moments I've ever seen in my fucking life. How did we go from Walter Cronkite to that? Like, I literally know who you voted for. You're not a journalist, all right? Hey there, op-ed piece. All right, girlfriend has severe halitosis. Dear Billy Bats, I saw you perform at Hilarities in The Land. The worst fucking nickname. The Land. The Land of what? Jesus Christ, that's so fucking bad. And you had me in stitches. Please come back. The land. They had t-shirts back there. Defend the land. Do you know for half a second in Boston, they, 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 there's people calling it the bean? Don't do that. Bean town was bad enough. We don't make beans there anymore. Any more than Portchester still makes fucking lifesavers. Although Grand Rapids still makes furniture. Um... I, okay, anyways, I'm a 23-year-old man and recently began dating a girl I met on a dating app. We've been on two dates, and she has bad breath. Dump her. Jesus Christ. Over. The fuck do you care? It's not your problem. Uh, anyways, we've been on two dates so far, and they both went great. We went to a couple of museums. Well, how far away were you standing from her? Were you standing there going, uh, is that her breath or the artifacts? <laughs> Is that her breath or that fucking woolly mammoth statue that they dug out of the fucking ice 2,000 years ago? Anyways, uh, uh, actually, woolly mammoths were fucking 4 billion BC. Go fuck yourself. All right. We have a uh, good conversation and this great chemistry overall. But when she smiles, the sight and smell indicates years of not brushing or flossing. Dude, I, I, don't, I don't even know the fact that you need advice on this. There is thick, dark yellow buildup along her gum line. Oh, my God. I'm going to puke. And she talks loud, so her breath travels a long way. Kissing is difficult to enjoy. <coughs> oh, my God. Dude, this is gross. I almost just gagged her. I almost just gagged her. Dude, what kind of fucking low self-esteem do you have? What is my advice? Either break up with her or take her to one of those self-power washes. 
car wash things and tell her to smile and fucking blast her right in the fucking grill. Jesus fucking Christ. That's the most disgusting visual. Oh, my God. (laughs) What the fuck? What is my advice? I I don't know what. You know what? My advice is they they should make a stamp for you because you're a goddamn saint. Oh, my God. Kissing is difficult. Ugh. Oh, my God. I think I got to walk this one off. Buddy. There's plenty of fucking fish in the fucking sea. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. That's like having a... Speaking of fish, that's like having a goddamn eel going along your goddamn gum lines. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I don't know why. Yeah, dude. I would just... Uh, that, that's it. It's over. I, there, there should be no... no. I, I mean... Uh, you going to hang in there with this one? What the fuck do you say? Hey, what are you doing Thursday night? Uh, nothing. Uh, you want to go to the dentist? <laughs> Let's get his and her cleanings. Oh my god, dude! If 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 that looks like that, what is what is the fucking basement gonna look like, dude? Oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, God bless you, dude. Yeah, I get her to a dentist. However, the fuck you bring that up, I don't know. Some questions are beyond me. All right, Jesus Christ! All right, that's the. Uh, I've never had to stop reading an email before. I haven't done that. I haven't them come that close to puking since Opie and Anthony, the baby bird, when I was in that fucking room. And I still to this day cannot tell that story without fucking gagging and coughing. And if you puke easily, do not fucking go look up Opie and Anthony, baby bird. Um, all right, that's it. That's the podcast. Go fuck yourselves. I will check in on you on Thursday. Um, I am back to watching a little bit of baseball. I did miss the uh, Yankees. I was working the whole weekend. I think the Yankees got the better of us. I know we did win one game. Yankees are in third, and the fucking uh, Devil Rays are moving up. They're only a half a game out. So I'm going to try to watch for playing the fucking Toronto Blue Jays. Bam, 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 bam. Fucking um, Toronto Blue Jays there. That was my reference to uh, whatever that fucking song is by Rush. That is the Morse code YYZ for Toronto's airport. Somehow they came up with a guitar riff for that. All right? That's something Kevin Murphy would try to do on F is for Family. Huh? Season two on Netflix. Look at that. Coming out of that disgusting story, promoting his show, telling you to go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday.